welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. So you can email us your questions to jimandjoy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. So the question for today's show is this. Please share what apostolate or form of outreach that you or your family engage in to make Christ known to others? That's a great question. It is a great and question. And we need it's to ask important. ourselves that question because sometimes we get so ingrown and we just yeah. take care of our family and our family's needs and those are important. Huge. We, yeah. That's a big responsibility. But sometimes we need to do an outreach. Absolutely. We need, we need to look out of ourselves and give ourselves away <laughs> and right. find out who we really are. Yeah. So we're focusing on what apostolate, what work of service that you know you might be doing or you had done. Um, we think of the corporal works of mercy, feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, uh, shelter the homeless, the sick, the imprisoned, bury the dead, and then the spiritual works of mercy, counsel the doubtful, instruct the ignorant, admonish sinners, comfort the afflicted, forgive offenses, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, bear wrongs patiently, pray for the living and the dead. So there are apostles particularly, but it, it's about that stuff there. It's about that Whether stuff. Whether it's a physical act of feeding somebody or visiting somebody in prison or the work of evangelization or whatever it is, or your EW10 media missionary, I just want to throw that mm -hmm. in there. Of course, that you should. Um, or you want to volunteer at a pregnancy medical center. Yeah. Or you want to hold babies in mm -hmm. the NICU. Mm -hmm. uh, you just want to go to senior citizen homes and nursing homes, love, love people. But, but this is at the core of what it means to be a human being. What right. is at the core? It's more blessed to give your life mm -hmm. than to receive life. And people think like, I can't do that because I'm not qualified. Well, we, we don't need to be qualified. We just need sometimes to be obedient and to say, yes, Lord. Lord, I desire to do this. God, anoint me and equip me with a loving heart that I would love and serve. We can't solve all the world's problems, right? But we can love another human being. As Mother Teresa used to say, if you wanna change the world, go home and love your family, yeah. right? Yeah. Go home and feed the poor that are right in your sphere of influence yeah. that you can take care of. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's good to <clears throat> do a missionary trip where maybe you go to another part of the country, another part of the world, but sometimes it's right in your backyard. Sometimes it's right in your home. Right. And but, you need to do work, works of mercy right. right there in your home. Yeah. So it's things that we're doing, we're acting, we're living, but it emanates from the heart, the soul being made in the image and likeness of God, the Holy Trinity, mm. who has always three persons, one God, Father giving his life to the Son, the Son to the Father, the Holy Spirit to the Father and to the Son. They're not about themselves, they're about the other one. Mm -hmm. And so giving, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. If you find your life, you're gonna lose your life. That's a problem with so many of our young people. Mm. And so we're wondering, what's going on? What's happening? It's such a narcissistic, give me stuff society. And nobody's happy because the element of apostolate, of giving yourself away, of serving somebody, of, of serving humanity and serving Jesus in humanity, when you do that, right. there's a radical change. Finally, the eyes are off yourself. You're not thinking about yourself. And you just say, I just want to love somebody with the love of Jesus Christ. Right. And that makes all the difference in a young person's life, in a marriage, and in a family. And, and sometimes it might mean a smile. You say, well, I'm out in the, in the shopping center, I'm here, and, and yeah. people in the world look miserable. Mm. And they need a smile, yes. they need kindness, they need to hear the words, thank you. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm, I mean, we need to say these things to each other. We have, we've lost the virtue of niceness, of being kind and loving. And so we really have to do that to the best of our ability, that it comes from a pure and holy heart, and that whether it comes back to you or not, it doesn't matter, because you're doing it for the audience of one, just Jesus. So how are you serving humanity? How are you serving others? How are you serving... Jesus in others. We want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that today we're taking your questions on our show. So you can email us with your questions to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com and check us out on Facebook. And I think this is a great question. And here it is. Please share what apostolate or form of outreach that you or your family engage in to make Christ known to mm -hmm. others. Now, when we were raising our children yeah. at that particular point in time, you were an Episcopal priest. Yeah. We lived in the church rectory. We lived in a community that was in transition uh, in the South in 1980 in Fairfield, Alabama. And we, had, we lived among the poor as an intentional decision that we made. So we were in the rectory and it's all great and wonderful, but people in our community were hungry and they would come to our house and want food. And I don't know if we had a neon flashing light on outside. It was like, go to the pastor's house, he'll feed you. And we did. We did. And we made a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, bologna and cheese sandwiches, and then our church started a soup kitchen. Yes. And for 15 years, we had the privilege of serving over... I forget the stats. It was like it was 100, 100 to 150 a day. Right. And it was, you know, like thousands of... 15,000 people a year we served. But, but we started in our home. Right. And then, then we started the kitchen. Right. And, and yeah, that came out of that. But our kids would serve in our that kids kitchen. would serve. Not only the meals, but they would fellowship with people mm -hmm. and get to know them. And the human element, not just the feeding people, right. but getting to know, know them. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it changes your heart, um, you know, because we, we come and we all, we're all on a journey to holiness. And I can remember, you know, seeing people on the line and, and you would say the best thing. You would say they might not be hungry, but they're coming there for fellowship. Mm. They're coming there for community. Yeah. And, um, and, and, there, and it was, it became it was a, community a community of love for the people who attended there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it was yeah. a beautiful, beautiful ministry. You, you know what, and that, that's <clears> so <throat> true, but a number of them were genuinely hungry. You know what happened? Mm. There, there was ice, snow, all the buildings were shut. Oh my gosh, But, but we did, yes. we did our, our feeding thing in, in our facility, which used to be our early church. Right. And people walked miles. Mm -hmm. Alabama people don't like to get cold, okay? Right. Like it's mm -hmm. icy, it's raining. And we had, 30, 40 people that came to eat. Right. Like they were, they, they were weren't going to get a meal for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, like, as you said again, it's just the human element. The thing that was neat about that too is that, you know, we had so many doors that we had to lock up. And if I missed a door, sometimes people would come from that kitchen and say, you know, your door's open. Right. Right. Other they weren't going to steal. Other people were getting robbed. But right. for us, it was kind of like, hey, <laughs> you know, reporting. your door's open. You might want to lock the yeah, door, you know? Yeah, so sweet. We got a phone call here, huh? Yes, we have Christine on the phone. Christine, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Tell us um, if you're involved in an apostolate or something that you're doing personally or that your family is doing. And the difference it makes in your life as well. Go right ahead, Christine. Christine, are you there? Maybe she's not there. Well, we can't hear in here. Yeah. I don't know if they can hear someplace else. Yeah. But we're going to need to get that fixed. Fixed. So, but anyway, we, we can anything. talk. So we lived in Fairfield. We served the poor. We started a medical community. A me medical clinic. Right? Because yeah. people had health needs. We also started a home, home for, home for girls. girls. And that was really beautiful, yeah. called the Grace House. Yeah. And that was all birthed from our happy little church. You would have thought in our church family that we were thousands of people, but we weren't. We no. were like 350 people, but you know what we were? Our hearts were set on fire for yeah. God. And anything that God asked yeah. us to do, we were like, oh yeah, sure, we could do that. Oh, sure, we could do that. And we did that. And then what we did was we involved people from the other side okay. of town to get involved. That's and right. that was such a beautiful thing. I'm hoping we have Christine back on. Christine, are you there? I'm here. Okay, there you are. You are. I'm so Yay. sorry for that. But you just go, go right ahead. We're so glad that you're with us. And again, you know the question, are you involved in a, an apostolate, anybody in your family? Uh, what is it? Why are you doing it? How does it help others? How does it help you? So just go right ahead. Uh, we are involved and have been involved since my, my girls were little. It is a family affair. Uh, we are involved with feeding the homeless. Um, what started as every Christmas morning um, developed into uh, a friend of mine who started a nonprofit to feed the homeless. And I retired as a teacher and joined her. 
and uh, our families are very involved in this. Um, we serve the homeless in downtown Birmingham seven days a week. Um, and uh, in the beginning, it was just our families uh, who were wow. out serving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and during COVID, it was just our families because we had to be secure. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it was, um, my, my family's been involved with this, like I said, since my girls were little. Mm-hmm. So they have been involved with the community. Um, they know the homeless, the homeless know them. They ask how they're doing. They get mm-hmm. excited when the families are on the truck so they can mm-hmm. catch up. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, it was a leap of faith to do this and it has bought more, brought more blessings than, um, I can write down in, you know, pages of the yeah. Bible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Christine, when you say it, this ministry, what's the name of the outreach? The name of the, the name of the outreach is food for our journey. Food Perfect. for our journey. How food are you for feeding? Our journey. Are you going right to them out on the street or under we, a bridge uh, and feeding them, or is faith, there a place? Mm-hmm. We're a faith-based initiative that uses a food truck to take the food to the homeless, uh, to the hungry. Uh, we feed the homeless and the food insecure. Um, and this was brought about by the fact that um, if the soup kitchens, the fixed locations, were not open during a time when mm-hmm. they could get there, then they would miss a meal. Mm-hmm. Or if it was too cold or if it was raining or they just chose, you know, to stay where they were instead of, you know, and deal with the hunger. And so this, this has changed, but we do. We stretch um, all over downtown Birmingham yeah. from 65 all the way to 2059 and from Five Points down to St. Paul Cathedral. Mm-hmm. And we are under the overpasses. We know where they are. We bring the food to them. Yeah. Um, it is fellowship. It is love. We celebrate yeah. birthdays. We celebrate births. We um, and we are a vessel of trust for them, mm. so that once the, the the food is is a vessel, so that not only are they being fed, they're being fellowshipped, but then there's mm. a trust that's built where they can say, "I need help here," mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it spreads to then we're able to plug them into resources into different agencies to get further help. Mm. Excellent. Christine, thank you so much. Food for the Journey is the name of the ministry. I'm sure there's a website there if people are hearing this. You might say, that's an interesting model. I want to know more about that. Maybe you can start something like that where you are and uh, speak to Christine and the other person who helped her to begin this and start that where you are. I loved Mm -hmm. how she shared the physical aspects, but also the the friends. She's talking about birthdays and birthdays. Right, like well, because you, you establish a community. Because if they're homeless, they have no other place to go. They're looking forward to your truck uh, arriving. And I have seen their van in downtown Birmingham yeah. riding around. And you're just, you're so grateful. I mean, because as a human being, you drive by and should I stop? Should I give them money? Should I go buy them lunch? Right. And to know that there are people out there on the street doing that, yeah and loving them and caring for them is important. In, in an important. organized way, you with other people, the police get to know you and who right. you're about everything mm-hmm. else. And it's kind of like, you know, here's a meal if that's all you want, you're not happy about it, whatever, that's okay, we're gonna do this. Or you build a relationship and you right. say, no, here's other helping agencies. Mm-hmm. If you wanna get off the street, you know, he, he, we can help you mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. You need to rehab in some way, mm-hmm. or you just, it, this mental illness, whatever it might be. You need a warm you know, bed. Like, they trust you, and mm-hmm. you can say, here's something else beyond what we're doing. So it's fantastic. Well, thank you, Christine, for your great work. We have Anne on the phone. Anne, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Tell us your story, your comments. Yeah, so um, my form of outreach is St. Paul Street Evangelization, and I've been doing this for about nine years. Um, It's a grassroots nonprofit organization, and we set up just uh, a sign, and we have some blessed rosaries, and we stand like at a street corner, like maybe in Detroit or Royal Oak, or perhaps we have uh, permission to set up a table inside a soup kitchen in Detroit or in Pontiac. And we stand there and answer questions. Um, our sign says something like, Catholic truth, free literature, can we pray for you? And then we have an image of Jesus on there. And um, it's been a wonderful way to uh, make Christ known to the people of the world. Yes. Beautiful. So you, Do your yeah. children participate in that with you? Uh, my children are older. Um, my husband does this whenever he's able. Some of mm-hmm. our um, 
evangelization. One of our teams serves a Catholic ministry in the Detroit area called Awaken, and um, that's uh, a time when we go to a Catholic event. Some events are Catholic and some are, you know, more like for the public. But even at the Catholic events, we're very needed there. And um, in the evening events, my husband joins us. Yes. Yeah, so I went to a training in 2013, and I was so blown away by it. It was it was done by the founder, Steve Dawson, yeah, as right. well as Adam Janke. And um, I told my husband about it. He had been out of town. We went back one month later for the exact training, and we were both blown away and saying yeah. to each other, you mean we're supposed to be out there talking yeah. about Jesus? Yeah. You know, the Gospels, uh, Jesus says it in the Gospels, and the rest of Scripture, and the, the saints, and the popes, and all the encyclicals. Yes. and We were blown away. So yeah. we really got behind this and started um, actually two different teams one at a soup kitchen in Pontiac, and one through the Awaken Ministry, as I mentioned. Um, so serving all kinds of different people, sometimes Catholics and sometimes, you know, everybody that might be, you know, out on the street. Mm -hmm. What do you say, just and just do it in a nutshell, people who say, well, I thought that's for evangelical people or Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses. Catholics don't go out and do that. I mean, you're asking... <laughs> It, what do you say real quick? Well, it's, it's right in the catechism that lay people um, also fulfill their prophetic mission by evangelizing. And um, mm. this is most especially helpful because we're out in the world. Yes. And people say, oh, oh, yeah, so they're like me. And I'm, yes, I'm just like you. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I didn't go to yeah. the seminary. I did take some training, but I'm not a seminary trained person. I don't have a degree in philosophy or, or the faith. Mm. Um, you know, my training is in the science area, and I just, yeah. I just see, you know, that yeah. God has really changed me through this as yeah. well, seeing mm -hmm. that every mm -hmm. person needs that's how it usually That's how it usually works. And thank you so very, very much for doing your part to fulfill the Great Commission. May the rest of us not just admire you, but get on with it mm -hmm. with you. St. Paul Street Evangelization. Excellent. Right. And then we have a comment. 40 Days for Life means the world to our family because it's a powerful tool in the hands of those seeking to make abortion unthinkable. Their efforts to close clinics, save lives, and embody the spirit of Jesus by offering hope, love, and compassion to a world in turmoil are a testament to the love that Jesus and pro-life advocates share for all. And it's a reminder that ultimately, that love ultimately prevails. 40 Days for Life serves as a remarkable mission field where we can actively demonstrate the love of Jesus to frighten parents and witness how this love empowers them with hope and courage to choose life. I just frightened parents. Yeah. So she's talking about those who are thinking about ab aborting. I, I never heard it put that way. That's but really that is really powerful. true. I mean, I think I, are, I spoke yeah. with a couple the other day. The girl was frightened. She was afraid. She didn't. She had health issues. She was afraid. She was afraid to tell a mother. So fear. And so ways that we can then, as people of God, stand in the gap and and get to help them to get rid of their fears and to say, wait a minute, this isn't the end of the story. We can help you with this and infuse hope and love and truth with the great hope that they'll change their mind. 40 Days for Life is still happening. It's all mm -hmm. over the world. Just go to their website, 40 Days for Life, and it, you'll find out where you can get involved if that's something. And if you're bedridden and you can't get out, you're in another phase and stage of your life, pray. Amen. Pray, pray, pray for the people who are on the front lines trying to bring hope and love and truth to those who are broken and hurting, whether they need a meal, whether they need medical attention, whether they need the truth about the gospel and the gospel of life. Just pray for all the people who are doing those great works. Thanks so much for your participation. May we all do our part to somehow, some way, in the works and deeds that we do, whether it's evangelization or feeding the hungry or visiting those in prison. And as we go, the kingdom of yeah. heaven will be at hand. Christ will bless others and bless you in your giving. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, today we're going to get to hear from beautiful, familiar friends of ours that I just love. I love their wisdom. Yeah. I love their marriage. I love their show. Dr. Greg and Lisa Popcheck. Now, Greg and Lisa, what do you have for us today? The world tells us that family life is an accessory, something we acquire. But family life is really an activity. We need to schedule time for it every day and, contrary to what the world says, plan all of our other activities around it. The church says that families are schools of love and virtue, but no one can learn any lessons if they don't actually spend time in school. Fortunately, helping your kids learn the lessons of love and virtue is a lot easier if you come together as a family for at least a few minutes every day to pray work, talk, and play together. Creating daily rituals around praying, working, talking, and playing together allows your kids to come alongside you as you teach them how Christians relate to each of these important areas of life. When your family prays together every day, you sit at the feet of the master and ask him to teach you how to love each other with the love that comes from his heart. When you work together, doing things like setting the table, doing the dishes, cleaning up the family room together, you're teaching your children how to be a team of good stewards, supporting each other in your efforts to care for the gifts that God has given you. When you carve out daily time to have real conversations, not just about what needs to be picked up at the store or who needs to be taken where, but about each other's hopes and dreams, biggest concerns, and ideas for taking better care of each other, you teach your kids to choose people before things or busyness. And when you make time to play together every day, wrestling with your kids, taking a walk, playing a game, sharing a laugh, we teach the lessons of teamwork, generosity, togetherness, and joy. You are your kids' most important teachers. By thinking of family life as an activity that requires time to do and effort to protect, you set the stage for a discipleship relationship with your kids, one that turns their hearts to you so that you can return their hearts to God. Want more ideas for ways to be a discipleship parent? Check out our book, Parenting with Grace, the Catholic Parent's Guide to Raising Almost Perfect Kids. Greg and Lisa, thanks so much for your ministry to the family. And Joy, that fits in perfectly with our theme for the day, which was service. and and what's your apostolate? Because it's all those things that the pop checks had shared that we've mm -hmm. always shared, prayer, being together, learning the virtues together. And a key way that you learn those virtues and being a true family is reaching out to other people, mm -hmm. reaching out to other families. Give yourself away as, as a family. Mm -hmm. And so whatever service you do, that's gotta be at the core of what the family is about. We had the Martins on some time back and they taught about the rule, mm -hmm. John Paul II's rule for beginning small groups and for families. And one of the key things he said is, you must have an apostolate. Yes. You must be reaching out, whether it's evangelization, service to the poor, feeding people, going to the nursing home, going to prisons. Do or, something. Or maybe it's like, you know, I, I've, I've walked for decades you know, in our community, mm -hmm. and, and I just pray. Mm -hmm. Each house, I meet people, and you're like, that's a whole outreach mm -hmm. that I have over 40 years, that I've built relationships with people. I'm like the mailman, mm -hmm. the spiritual mailman there. So an apostolate outreach, doing something beyond yourself, it's more blessed to give your life than to receive your life. It's in giving your life away that you find your life. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone. You're always at home with Jim and Joy, and we will be having Father Richard Ho Lung, the founder of the Missionaries of the Missionaries Poor. Missionaries of the Poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll be talking about his work. Right. They're great, great mission great work. and they're great apostolate. God bless you. Bye now. <laughs>